Hello, my name is Kremita. Thank you for coming to code with me today. For this project, we're going to create a logging mechanism in Java that's appropriate for a larger scale, multi-threaded application. This size application might have multiple methods of storing logging information, or it might have multiple places the information is produced. On projects created on a large scale, there's usually multiple people working on the project. From the perspective of the user logging the messages from their code, they don't want to have to think about what method is consuming the log messages. These consumers could either be writing the messages to the console, displaying it on some GUI component, or storing it in a database, or even streaming the info over a network socket. On top of this, they especially don't want to have to rewrite the code they're creating every time a pointy-haired boss wants a new mechanism to store the logging info. To accomplish this, we're going to abstract away the production of the log messages from the consumption of them. In Java, this is easily accomplished using the observer and observable mechanism. With this tool in hand, we can have one or more messages produced streaming information to one or more message consumers. We also want to support multiple log levels that different consumers might be interested in. For example, debug or error log information. This method can also be extended for other sources of data in your program and not just log messages. For example, if lots of program components wanted to know about sensor data or stock prices, the method that we're covering today would be perfectly reasonable approach. All the code produced in my videos is available on GitHub under the MIT license, so you can use it for anything under the sun. So let's begin. So right at the start, we're going to start with a simple Hello World Java program where we have the main method. And we're going to run it just once to prove that it prints out. So sure enough, it does. And let's move on to making our logging stuff. AppLog is a class that's going to extend Java Observable so that others can watch the log messages that it produces. Here I'm in the new class menu creating an enum for the log level. This is fairly basic, but this is where you define new log levels if you wanted to come back later and add some more. I like to add lots of comments so that when I forget in six months what I wrote, it's all recorded. Eclipse has great support for the built-in Javadoc mechanism. If you see me selecting all there, it's because I'm a person that likes to compulsively run the auto formatter in the IDE. If you don't know about this feature, you can auto format the entire file the way that you like it by, per by pressing Control A and then Control Shift F. Eclipse supports multiple profiles so that if different projects have de tabs versus spaces or the brackets on different lines, it's easy to switch between them. In the menu here, I'm creating a log event class, which will store both the log message and the log level associated with it. I usually make fields internal to a class protected, unless there's a great reason to make them private. Protected fields allow unit tests in the same package to query the value of the fields directly in the test. Here we're going to give the class a default constructor as well as an explicit constructor. I do a little bit of refactoring here with the hotkey. If you don't know about this, it's pressing Alt Shift R in Eclipse will rename a variable or class and update all the references to it in your project. If you right click in the editor and select source, Eclipse has some great boilerplate co code generation features. Here we're going to generate the getter and setter methods for all the fields of this class, as well as the hash code and equals methods so that we can use log events safely in hash tables if we like. And you can also generate a toString method automatically. Next we're going to move on to implementing the log class itself. So this is the class that's actually going to produce our log messages. The design pattern we're going to use here is called a singleton. It's a common pattern when you want there to only ever be one instance of a given object in your program. It's commonly used for loggers or for some core component that manages the resources of your program. 
To accomplish this, we're going to create a private static instance of our class. This ensures that no one can access it outside of this class and that there can only be one copy of it. Next, we're going to create the getInstance method. This is public, static, and synchronized. If we haven't created our single instance yet, it's created and then returned by the method. Otherwise, the existing one is returned. It's synchronized to prevent a specific corner case. This is where the instance hasn't been initialized yet and two separate threads both call the getInstance method. If the instance is still null, when both threads enter the function and get past the if statement, two copies could be created. The synchronized keyword prevents this. There's still one other corner case. If the class is ever manually loaded with a second class loader, and a second copy could theoretically exist. If you're playing with class loaders in your program, keep this in mind. Next, we're going to add a vector of all the observers which are listening to our log messages. We want to keep this here in case we want to add or remove some observers at a later point in our program. I'm using a vector because it's synchronized and implements the list interface, so it's much safer for using in a context where multiple threads are involved than an array list or a linked list would be. With our add observer method, we're going to add new observers to our list. It's important to add the at override annotation so that inheritance issues can be detected by the compiler at compile time. This saves you a ton of work trying to debug these issues at runtime if you didn't have the annotation. We also add a standard getter method for our list of observers. For our next methods in this app log class, we're going to implement the actual methods which are going to log the messages. First, we create one which is going to log a normal string log message. Next, we're going to create a convenience method which uses the string.format syntax and saves us from writing string.format everywhere in our code all the time. Next, I'm going to do a copy paste job for the same debug and error log messages. Finally, we're going to create a log exception method, which is conveniently going to pass the exception message as well as our stack trace into the logging mechanism. We now need to create an observer for our log messages. To keep it simple, we're going to create an observer which prints these log messages to the console. Yours could print it to some GUI component, an HTML log file, to some web server, or whatever you boldly dare to dream. Our humble console logger is simply going to print to the console and it's going to have three flags which the user can toggle to turn on or off each of the logging levels. Here, we're going to use some more of Eclipse's boilerplate code generation to create getter and setter methods for each of these flags. In our update method, we're going to check that the argument passed in is of log event type. If your application has multiple observables, which are publishing events to this same observer, it might also be a rational decision to check which observable generated the log event. Here, we're simply going to print out each of the three cases to the appropriate output stream. We also want to log an error if we receive an event of an unknown log level. It's important to remember for threading considerations that what is being executed in the update method is being called by the producer thread. 
If the log message producer thread is performing some critical or high performance task, and your logging method is high latency, like writing to a disk or talking to a remote server, it would be wise to simply add the message to some thread safe data structure, like a concurrent linked queue. This would allow the high performance producer thread to get back to the important task at hand and have some low priority thread drain from this queue. Now comes the eagerly anticipated final demonstration. All the logging aficionados out there have been counting the minutes until we print to this console. Some people, myself included, find the syntax of the singleton pattern always typing out the get instance method to be quite cumbersome. Here I demonstrate that while only one instance of the singleton exists, you can still make and use a shorthand reference to it. I also demonstrate that turning off the different flags of the console logger to show that we can differentiate our output based on the different logging levels. I hope you enjoyed this video, so thanks for taking the time to come code with me. Again, all this code is up on GitHub, and the link is in the description. If you like the video, please consider liking or subscribing. All these things are always optional, but unless the robots take over and force you to do it, in which case I can't really help you there. Anyway, I made this content because I feel like there's a lot of beginning programming content out on YouTube. My goal is to target the intermediate or advanced audience. A lot of these beginner videos either waste a lot of your time while the creator types out and debugs their code, or is chasing down compile errors. On the flip side, more advanced content comes in the form of hour-long lectures. My goal here is to create concise, quality content that results in production-ready or near-production-ready code, which the viewer is knowledgeable about and is freely clonable off of the GitHub. If you have any content ideas, please message me or leave a comment. Thanks.